Good afternoon guys, it's James here at Sunseeker Southampton. Uh, we're down in Swanwick Marina today and we're just going to have a quick sea trial from the berthing pool here at my sales pavilion round to the hoist dock. Uh, we often get asked with yachts like this whether they are true owner operator yachts, what they're like close quarters manoeuvring and what have you. So it's a reasonably blustery day here, we'll just spin around you can see the flags here blowing about 15 knots from the north. Uh, so I've got one crew with me today, which is typically how an owner operator would run, maybe husband and wife type team. And we're just going to take the boat out of what is quite a tight mooring here, do a quick start up procedure, and then we'll run it round to the dock, tie it up ready for a lift first thing in the morning. Uh, this particular boat's coming out for some maintenance before it's off for onward shipping down to the med. So join us uh, as we just do this in a little bit more detail. So first things first, we're just going to imagine arriving at the marina for the first time. Boat's tied up slightly differently here at the moment as they're stored alongside. Coming onto the boat first time, you can see the shore power lead down here. Normally we'd be running across direct onto the pontoon. And that's like your electric mains extension lead at home, just running the battery chargers and what have you whilst the boat is in its storage mode. Over here on the port side here, always slightly different on all the boats layout, but we've just got a key switch that we put in, turn the batteries on. You can see little red lights coming on on the LED switches. We've got two for the individual engine circuits and then we've got one for the domestic system so they're powered up now coming up we've got a quick key in the door lock here pop that open sliding doors of course these lots of walk around videos on my channel how these work doors all stack back one side or the other we're going to drive today from upstairs so no need to worry about visibility from the lower helm here but generally on startup we do this from the lower helm you can see we've got System's just coming to life now, now that I've put the battery switches on. So you can see things like the DC circuits here, we've got plenty of power in our batteries. So across under here, we've got a little protective cover that goes over the throttle box. Just gonna take that off. Turning the two ignition circuits on there, you can see we've got start and stop buttons over here, starboard side. We have to activate the throttles before it will allow us to start. So we've got neutral indent here and then forward and reverse. So just gonna do a double tap on there. We've got a solid blue light now on here. Might be flickering on your cameras a bit. And up on the panels here, you can see gearbox is showing in neutral. And we're just gonna hit start buttons. And those V12 1550 MAN engines firing into life. So you can see here, we're just showing the revs. Liters an hour burn here, obviously very little whilst the boat's just in tick over. Everything's very docile at this level, so we'll be doing our nice close quarters maneuvering with everything just above tick over to make it very, um, very slow. So we, these are hydraulic thruster upgrades, which means I've just powered them up on here. You can see the hydraulic temperature fluid there at 19 degrees. So these have got lots of power. And I generally like to just test these before we depart the dock, just to check that they're working. So we're all good now, the lower helm, all set up. So we're just gonna head back out. You notice no shoes inside, like to try and keep the boats as clean as we possibly can. So just coming up here onto the flybridge. You notice all the cushions up, we had a viewing this morning and the cushions have got wet from the rain, so we're just drying those all out. So from the flybridge here, you can obviously see they're not in neutral. Obviously people playing around with them at the boat shows. So we're just gonna put them back into neutral there. Double tap on there, we've got the blue light. And if I momentarily knock that into gear and then out, you'll see the boat moving here alongside. So I've got control here on my throttles underneath the panel here as per downstairs. And just power up my thrusters. And I've got plenty of power there they of course have the function hold on the side here. So if we engage, you can see it's now engaged the starboard thrust and it's pinning the boat now against the other one. If we come across this side, you'll see the water surface moving there where the, effectively the thrusters are pinning the boat on the dock. Quite handy if you're running short-handed. We can turn the power up on those if we need to just to hold the boat in position here whilst we get ourselves sorted out. So I'm just gonna take that off, knock everything back to neutral we can get our lines sorted out and join us back as we depart the dock. 
And that's worth noting, just stick the camera over here. You can obviously see pretty tight here at the moment. Mooring's really geared up this size in the marina here for 55 feet. So it's quite tight. Normally the fairways here, which is this area here between the finger pontoons, is wide enough to allow boats to turn round. Now given, you can see most of the boats on these moorings are between about 40 and 50 feet. We haven't got room to turn a 76 around in here today. So we're gonna have to back all the way out to the river. So we'll be cross wind and cross tide till we get out to the main fairway channel. We're gonna take a right, literally up around the corner of the marina and tie up along the dock up the top side there. So check back soon and we'll get her off the berth and off we go. Okay, so just before we depart the dock, I'm just gonna show you how we set the boat up to make it easy to handle the lines and fenders. So just coming around here, you can see we've dropped everything back to what we call single line now. So these are ready to slip off the cleats. We, take, we had another one over here, which we didn't need. The wind's blowing from this side over off the berth. So we've taken all of those off. So literally we can drop that bow line Stew our crew can pull that in and that'll take the bow off. We've got big, powerful hydraulic thrusters as we just saw, so I can leave those in place once we get the stern line off as well. And then we'll take her off the dock. So just coming back around here, you can see single line set up here on the cleat. All the fenders, we've just taken the lock knots off on the bottom, so they're very easy to drop down to water level because we're going to be taking the boat in alongside a pontoon up the other end. Just gonna check we've still got all our power. So we're just gonna turn that on. You see that'll close the two boats up. Okay, Stu, so we can now take our bow line off. So you can see the bow's now off quite windy so I'm just going to put another another click so we've got two clicks on that thruster now just bringing us back over to hold that in place you can see a reference point we've got a little yellow post stuck up over there boat's not moving absolutely rock solid so he's got time to do his line there wind's picking up a bit now you can see those flags really starting to blow on our cross Broad side, so it's going to take us off the mooring as soon as I drop these thrusters off. So we just let him sort out that stern line. And I'm basically going to position him over on this side, on the port side, so he can call me on the pontoon that's hidden down here. We're going to be quite tight on this as we come off the dock here. So we're just going to knock our thrusters off here starboard engine into stern you see we're going to use a little bit of thruster here just to keep the boat nice and tight up against this other one doing everything nice and slow so we've got plenty of time you can see I can see down the stairs there just to give me an idea of what sort of space we've got this is going to be quite a tight maneuver today as we didn't have a boat behind us here when we put her in. So you can see the bow of the 55 there. So we're just gonna take that nice and gentle. So it's a very possible to do this two people. Just using a little bit of my stern thruster here. You can see how that also rotates the bow round, so we've just got to keep an eye on both ends of the boat any one time.
beauty of the big powerful thrusters here is the ability to have absolute control of the boat when we need it. So we obviously can see now we've got just enough room to let that nose come around. Always remember the anchor stuck out the front there. It's just a little bit more on our thrusters here just to get us up sideways in the wind and the tide. You see how that boat's being pulled across on the thrusters. And I'm now going to use my engines here, just going to back them in, in and out of gear one by one. See it's all quite tight down here, so you'd normally have a lot more room. Our 22 meter finger moorings are all down this side of the pontoon, this is a nice big fairway pool in here. So if you're ever berthed at somewhere like Swanwick here, with a bigger boat such as this, you wouldn't have these sort of problems coming in. Important always to remain calm, so you've got plenty of time to sort yourselves out. If it's going wrong, you've got loads of time to assess the situation, make a plan of how to get yourself out of the sticky situation. So you can just see using the thruster and throttle controls here just to keep the boat level here in the tide. Tide's coming in or well, out on the river at the moment so it's going broadside that way. It's important when we get to the end here obviously to make sure we're clear so do have a habit of paddle boards and boats suddenly appearing as this is the main channel down to open water it's again just on the engine controls here looks clear both ways boat does about six knots as soon as we put it into gear so we tend to do most of our maneuvering here one engine at a time you can see with those rudders straight the boat will without the tide and wind actually back down pretty straight I'm momentarily going to put both engines into reverse at once you'll see how much speed it picks up prefer to do it one at a time so it just gives us a bit more control a couple of boats coming up there in the distance So rotating now, we could use the thruster controls, but we've also got these large four blade bronze propellers underneath us. So we're just going to put this one into a head. We're going to put this one into a stern. And you'll see now the boat's spinning almost on its own axis. See how that comes round just before we over rotate. Just going to knock that one off, that one off, back into neutral. Going to let the boat settle, and then I'm just going to engage my forward drive, and off we go. Now we've got some water flow underneath the rudders. We can take over. You see now on the steering, we've got control of the boat. Needs to be about three knots really for the rudders to be doing anything. Conscious always of not exceeding the six knot speed limit here. We make quite a bit of wash on something this size, weighing in about 50 tonnes. So I'm just going to knock those back into neutral, let them settle down. And then just momentary touching them in and out of gear just to maintain that momentum. So we're going to come round the corner here, take a right, and there's a long linear pontoon leading into the hoist dock, which is where we will be berthing today, tying her up ready for a six o'clock lift tomorrow morning on the top of the tide. Lift crew are quite adapt to lifting boats this size here at Swanwick. It's about the biggest they can lift on the 65 tonne machine here. It's more the size of the dock than the hoist itself and where the, where the weight sits in the boat. But you see as we come around the corner here where we're going to end up. Okay.
just come up behind us. Yeah. So as is often the case, you turn up somewhere you haven't been before and somebody's left the boat in the way. So we're actually going to tie up on the pontoon in front of the tug where there isn't currently room to accommodate us. So what we're going to do here is just momentarily come in alongside this pontoon. You see I'm just letting the nose come across in the wind. As soon as that nose has gone over, over centre on the wind, we're just going to momentarily put her on the berth here so we can drop one of the guys off and then he can you can pull that little launch back. So you see we're doing everything nice and slow, so just going to let this drift in on the wind. If I put this engine in a stern here, this engine ahead, just square that boat up. Just haven't used the thrusters, they're there to help you when you need them, so don't be afraid to use them. Boat's coming in quite fast here on the wind, so all I'm going to do with the thrusters here is just gently, gently power off the pontoon just to slow down that approach. So, Stuart's now off the boat here, so we can use the thrusters to take us back away from the dock. Obviously, do this with the engines as well if we need to bring it back out into the middle while he gets himself sorted out on the launch there and then we'll drift back in. see the winds now coming from this sort of port quarter angle so all I'm going to do on my engines here is put this one into a stern that's going to start to bring the stern you see that's dragging the stern in just square the boat up on the engines here and then we can let it drift in on that nice broadside wind. So you can see the boat is pretty much the same width as a dock. We haven't got room to put fenders down when we're in there. So she's coming out to have the bottom painted, change the anodes, polish the propellers, usual season maintenance, and then say she'll be off on a ship. Down to the sunshine. Swanwick obviously not looking quite so sunny today. So again, just as before, I'm just gonna use those thrusters to take a bit of the pressure off as we approach the dock, just so that we don't squash the fenders on arrival. I tend to try and pick a cleat, I'd like to put the line on, so you can see Stuart stood there next to the cleat we're going to put the stern line on. So we just let that drift in nicely. So he'll put that stern line on, and the wind's holding us on the pontoon, but we can now pin the thrusters here alongside the dock, come across this side. Well, look, you can see that current again, say, pushing us against the dock. Um, you can adjust that bow and stern in terms of its proportionality. If you've got a little bit more movement at one end of the boat from the other, the bow, see, is a much bigger thruster than the stern. So there we have it. We're in, we're tied up, we're safe. Hope you've enjoyed that. Shutdown is pretty much a reversal of starts. Just a couple of buttons downstairs, engines are off. We'll kill the boat on the batteries and then should be lifted first thing. Uh, will join us again, we'll have a little look round what she's like when she's out tomorrow.